Imani. Very nice. Drive. The ball outside. Very nice. Imani, very nice. Imani, Leo die. A gazelle, Strider, runs a 4-3. Me and Imani are going out of the first day. It, I mean, it was fun. My no! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! He got me today. He owe me right now. But I got him, though. He know the deal. He's just happy, I guess, to be here, which is good. But he's making the most of his opportunity now that he's here. Imani Lee. Yeah, I just stopped on my ankle, my bad ankle. This spring, he's been hurting, and it's just been rough for him. I'm good, though. He's been through so many injuries, he's like, well, just another one. I'll just keep playing. Pick it up, man. Ow! Billigan, 23! Go, let's go! This is not a walkthrough! Yes, sir! Let's go, baby! Terps on three. One, two, three. Terps. Right here, right here, right here. Come on, turn! Find the ball, find the ball! Go, 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 go! go. I believe in you as a team. I believe in the character of this team. On me, on me, hello. 322 scout, why stick on one, right? It was the first scrimmage, a whole week of practicing, ready to go out, play, make some plays. Set! Cut, cut, cut! I lost feeling in my finger, so I didn't know what was wrong. So came out there. I think they said I sprained my wrist. My you wrist. Your sport, yeah. I move it up and down. It's like a shot pain. So I feel like my crap hurt. On a scale of ten, about a nine. It's still throbbing right now. My eyes, it's like a different type of pain. Oh, he won't stop. Definitely won't stop. Won't stop for anything, whether it's an injury, whether it's bad weather, whether, I mean, he's having a bad practice, he won't stop. I had to suck it up and finish playing, because that's what I do. Coach, coach. We play with injuries, and I don't want the coaches to question my toughness, because that's the first thing, oh, he got hurt, so he saw, so I just stuck it out. Q, I got you. I'll let you know. That's just determination, that's all it is. Not wanting to give up. I'm lost. He's still out there, you know, bad wrist. He's still catching balls. Set, set. I took that pretty bad because I knew that's one thing I didn't need was to get injured. And then once that happened, it was just like, oh man, not this again. So when I got hurt, it was like, Another setback. Let's get some momentum off that. Come on, let's go. So it says a lot about his character that he's not he's not willing to give up and give in regardless of the circumstances. Come the boy, three Jeff Falcon, that Falcon, okay, wait. He's fighting through all his injuries. If he got to be on the field with two wrist brace and and both of his ankles spatted, he'll do it. But he just loves the game and he'll he'll get on the field no matter what. Set. Yeah, I thought he had some trap plays to make and he didn't make them. You know, he's got to continue to, uh, to get better and now he does a lot of good things, but he's got to finish and make the catch. And, you know, uh, I think he made it a couple times today, but he didn't make it every time. Kind of make a note of that. I'll try to make, cover that in the team meeting. Okay, then uh, uh, let's go to wide receiver. This should be the strength of our football team, and they're underproducing. Try to talk to James if we want him. Make that move and uh, and move Monty. Monty what, what's your X. thoughts? My my thoughts are you have Tory Smith at X. You back him up with Amani Lee. Amani's had a bunch of chances, and I'm not I'm not saying his opportunities are over, but he's not playing well to say he's the starter. I love Amani Lee. Um, 
He's a great kid. He's a really smart kid. He's a real positive kid. He's always got a smile on his face. He's very appreciative of the opportunity he has here at University of Maryland. We want as many guys like Amani as we possibly can here. But he's been very inconsistent. And he started at the top of the depth chart. But if some guys are making plays and another guy isn't, you can't justify that without making some moves on the depth chart. And Amani, I don't think it's an effort thing. I just, I just don't think he catches the ball consistently enough to say he's going to be a starter for us. The day they moved me down, I was upset, but I kind of was e expecting it. I knew it wasn't going to come down on me, but it's just something you don't want to face. And he was kind of down. I know he was kind of down. I mean, he didn't really show up. Well, as of now, it's just a sprained ligament. Uh, I'll be in for treatment tomorrow, and we'll see what's what. Physical pain, that's a type of pain from an injury. Emotional pain is just, that's the pain that hurt the most. Emotional pain only heals with time for the most part. Like my situation, in order to get through it, I have to just get back to where I was to make myself feel better because I won't feel better until I'm back to where I was. He's on the same level as you. Amani Lee is, uh, you know, an interesting kid. He's, uh, you know, he's a kid from uh, the Anacostia area of D.C. Most people, when they think of a black male with dreads from Southeast, that he's a criminal. He's he don't have nothing going in his life. There's nobody in his life. He's gonna end up in jail. Well, you can't judge a book by its cover. He's a guy that got here and probably, you know, his life here has been easier than the life he had at home. You should come back to my neighborhood one day to, because to see how I was raised and the things I didn't have to be the person that I am today. We're going to my old neighborhood where I grew up at. Southeast is a is an interesting place because you have your good parts of Southeast, then you have your bad parts. More where I grew up is it's more of I guess you could call it a jungle because there's so much stuff going on around there. This the apartment building where I grew up at. My childhood days was in this apartment building. My mother, my brother, and I lived upstairs in the top left of the apartment. So I have some some good memories, some violent memories. I know one one night this guy got shot right on this porch. From this porch right in the middle, he got shot. And he got shot in his head. There was blood everywhere. It was helicopters, police cars. My mom kept me in the house because she didn't want me to see it with my own eyes. But I came out here and I, I saw the guy on the ground. It was actually one of my best friend's uncle. All kids know now there's a lot of violence. And so to make it out of the hood, you, you got to put your best foot forward and have somebody there positive that encourage you, to motivate you to tell you that you can do it, not tear you down, but to build you up. I tell Imani that all the time. I mean, it's, it's not an easy road, but it's what you make of it. If you don't put nothing in it, you're not gonna get nothing out of it. The number one memory is of my brother getting killed because we was down here at my grandmother's apartment coming in, he came in, told us how he loved us and he had to do what he had to do, and then he left back out. I lost uh, my oldest son, his name was Jonathan. Jonathan was 16 years old when he um, got killed in the streets of Southeast. Sometime in the fire, sometime in the fire, sweet Jesus. had his 
biggest problems where he was selling drugs. He came in the house and he said somebody was trying to shoot him and then he left back out. When I went back out to find him, he was dead. And it was just like not even a block from where we lived at around the corner. So I was able to see him laying on the ground and at that time I just lost it as a mom. When I hear that mournful sound Sometime in the fire I don't even recall hearing a gunshot, but this alley right here was the alley 15 years ago that my oldest brother lost his life. I don't even think I've ever walked through the alley after that incident. I've stayed on this side. I used to frequent over there, but I think I never walked through that alley after that day. In the beginning, when I lost my son, I, I didn't want to be a mother. I didn't think at that time I had what it took to be a mother. I just, I, I, I just called his father and told him I couldn't be a mother no more because I, I felt within my heart that I didn't have it. I, I couldn't give what I didn't have. And I just, I, I just was trying to find myself, find my own way. <laughs>